Do you deserve your rank? That is the question we are here to answer today. If you're a high rank, it could be either or. You either do or you don't deserve it. If you're a low rank, there's a good chance that you feel you don't deserve it. Which is fine. It's perfectly valid. I'm a plat player too. I know the feeling of being trapped. And I don't like when a high tier player says, get good. It doesn't offer anything. All it does is make you feel awful for being at your low rank. Like you know you're improving at Overwatch, right? You're gaining knowledge, you're learning the tactics, the meta, all of that. How can you not feel like you're better than your rank when this stuff happens? I actually asked the Ryan after, like, how do you mess that up? And they said, they never played Reinhardt before. And my first thought was, then why are you playing him? But we'll address that later. I'm going to tell you why you're stuck at your low rank. Without belittling you and saying you're just not good. Over time, as our knowledge of Overwatch increases, the environment in which we play in encourages more risky and lazy behavior. We end up building bad habits. And once we are truly challenged, we're caught off guard. Whether it's a McCree or Tracer that just knows what they're doing, it's kind of like, oh, um, this doesn't happen often, what do I do now? I like to use my Farah as an example of this. Before, in my diamond heydays where I actually reached almost mid-diamond and was on my way to Masters, before I dropped a plat for three seasons, my Farah was very conscious of positioning. I didn't want a soldier of McCree taking me out, so I knew how to use the environment as cover. However, being in plat for three seasons and playing dozens and dozens of hours of competitive, over time, I just ended up flying out in the open and hovering right above the enemy team. It didn't matter because soldiers and McCrees, even widows at that rank, just don't do anything. I wasn't worried, so I would do risky behavior that would be punished at higher ranks. So I'm basically building bad habits. The risky behavior comes from not just what I feel is... The feeling you could just get away with it at low rank, so why play more conservatively or more careful if you can get away with it? The other reason, I think, is it's a sense of urgency to climb to the next rank. You, you take that risky behavior because the reward of eliminating a key target or making a play with your ultimate is so high. Like, if you can pull this off, you can win the match or you can get the next checkpoint or whatever. You have this urgency to hurry up and win the matches so you can get back to the rank you feel you deserve instead of taking your time and really thinking about it. We have to understand that there is a difference, a big difference between knowledge of Overwatch and the execution of that knowledge. And if you've been in a low rank for a very long time, like you dropped from plat to silver or from diamond to plat, if you dropped and you've been there for a long time, it will retroactively make you adapt to the rank that you're playing in. So you effectively become a worse player, even though your knowledge of the game is improving. You're learning something every day. You're going out, you're watching the YouTube videos, listening to the podcasts, just studying, you know, your favorite player on whatever heroes that you're trying to main. You're doing all of that, but you're still not climbing. Now, this is not everyone. Some people figure out how it is to climb and, th and that's fine. I'm talking to the People who are doing all this stuff, learning about the game, and they're still stuck at their rank. You have to understand that playing in that environment for so long, you have to be careful because it makes you a worse player. So if you were, say, Diamond like me, and then you dropped to Plat, and then you couldn't climb back up, over time, you just become a worse player. Because you're trying, you're, you feel like you're racing against the clock here. You're, you're trying to rush through these matches to get back to your rank, but you're effectively becoming a worse player. You're forgetting things as simple as grouping up, ult timing, positioning, target matchups, things like that. You're just forgetting this stuff. So again, you increase your Overwatch knowledge, you learn more about the game, but you're doing risky behavior and you're getting away with stuff because you know you can. But effectively, it makes you a worse player. It retroactively makes you adapt to the rank that you currently are stuck in. So yes, you deserve your rank. But it's not written in stone. You can relearn what you used to know. Now that's for another video, but today 
is really just answering the question, do you deserve your rank? Here's a list of questions you could ask yourself, I feel, that'll help you determine if you truly deserve your rank. And then in another video, I'll address how you can address that. Number one, when was the last time you reviewed your gameplay? Yeah, I'm sure most of you would say never or not recently or anything like that. But you have to understand, if you didn't climb up to Masters or GM in Season 2 or 3, like those guys are constantly challenged every day. Being at the low rank you are and learning the game, you're not being challenged and then you start, again, doing risky play. You don't see what you're doing. If you've been stuck in your low rank for the last three seasons, four seasons, it's time to do a VOD review because you're missing something. You think you got something down pat when you really don't. Just put your pride aside or don't. I know it sounds like it's boring. It's actually not. And you don't have to do a VOD review for every match. I think it's the most underrated tip that people avoid because it seems tedious and boring. I can tell you watching one VOD review will give you more knowledge on what you're not doing than playing 30 matches and hoping you just pick something up naturally. You can avoid so much losses and frustration just by reviewing one match. I did it myself and it opened my eyes so much. It allowed me to climb to diamond just by doing one VOD review. Technically I did two, but just one VOD review can show you what you're doing wrong. I actually think the best matches to review, if you can, are the matches where you have gold medals, you think you did really good, and you lost. Now granted, you have to understand something. Everyone makes mistakes. You know, you didn't do your ultimate right. You, like for me as a solo remain, I hacked the wrong target at the wrong time. I should have hacked someone else. That happens. But if you're going into solo queue, you have to understand that you pretty much have to play perfectly. I know it's frustrating to feel like, oh, every little mistake I make, you know, makes or breaks the win of this game. True, but you're solo queuing. So yes, you have to play perfectly. Once you reach masters and you're comfortable there, then, you know, everyone kind of picks up their own weight so you, you can make a few mistakes and still secure a win. But if you're trying to seriously climb 100 SR, 200 SR, 400 SR, you need to perfect your game. Which is the reason why I, I, I encourage people to choose a main. That's for another video, but you really should choose a main. Not one trick, a main. Which brings me to question number two. Do you play that hero efficiently? Flexing isn't really the answer. Now, I want to try and clarify this. Fle while flexing is a good thing, you should not flex to all the heroes. You should have a pool of heroes of about five max i think i think a good number is three or four but five probably the maximum after that you really can't be efficient on heroes past that number because the amount of time and devotion you would have to put to these heroes to get that effective it's you just you just can't i have a minimum of 40 hours on half the heroes in this game but i still am only really really good with a few of them you have to know the nuances for me as a sombra main I learned, I actually like to watch Fitzy, he's a really good Sombra main, and I learned from him how if you're coming out of spawn as Sombra, to throw your translocator, and just before it hits the ground, go invisible, because you're cutting down the time that it takes for your translocator to land where you need it to, because she doesn't teleport exactly where it goes until it lands, she's always a little bit short. And there's also animation when she goes invisible, so by waiting for the translocator to land, you go invisible, cutting down the time it takes to go invisible, so when you translocate, you're already at full speed. That little trick allows me to traverse the map probably f faster than anyone else. And having a backup that you're really good at, like one or two backup heroes, is a good thing. You want to flex to maybe you need a healer, you need a tank. Well, then play your best one. Don't flex and say, oh, we need a barrier tank. But you never play Reinhardt. You never play Orisa. Don't run them. This game isn't just going to automatically give you a leg up just by picking the hero. You have to know how to play them efficiently. The more efficient you are, the higher chance you are to climb and secure more wins. Number three, do you strictly adhere to the meta? Ask yourself this, how many times have you said, oh, we need this hero, we need a barrier tank, we need a hit scan, those kinds of things. In my opinion, team comp should be your last concern. 
your main concern when it comes to climbing at low ranks is making sure your team is grouping up and communication. Also deliberately staggering the enemy. That's a huge tip right there, deliberately staggering the enemy. I actually don't really like team wipes anymore unless it's like point B attack Hanamura because then you need to team wipe them. But staggering is such a powerful thing because at low ranks, no one groups up, especially the enemy. So if you keep staggering them, it just makes your job so much easier. These are like th three things that you should worry about. Grouping up communication and deliberately staggering the enemy. That's it. Meta doesn't mean anything. At what point it does mean something, I can't say that now because I'm just early diamond. But from what I hear, Masters is really where meta starts to really kick in. So if you're in gold trying to say we need two healers or we need two tanks, no, you can literally just have all three, all DPS and just win. You can frag your way out of gold and below pretty much. Plat is when you really start to learn macro concepts in Overwatch. Do you blame others often? Now this is a problem that's been going on since I think season three and it's been getting worse. I think season six was personally my most toxic season where I dropped the most. I dropped from m almost mid diamond and in season six I think I actually dropped a tiny bit down into gold and I pretty much hovered around 2600 for the rest of the season. That was my most toxic season. It was really rough for me. I uh, I was arguing with everyone, trying to tell them how to do their roles. Not that I don't do that now, but it's much, much less because I am understanding that when I solo queue, I cannot have any real expectations out of my team. I have to focus on my own gameplay. So if you find that you are blaming your team for your losses, for the fact that you're not climbing, you really need to stop that. Doesn't matter if you're right. You probably are right in whatever you're critiquing. But that's not going to help you climb. You have to be the X factor and play better than everyone, including the people on your own team. If you want a more balanced match, then group up with people. So again, if you blame others often, like a lot, for you not climbing, it's because of that attitude that you're not climbing. I'm sorry to say. And again, your critiques are probably right, but it doesn't matter. You blaming others means that you're busy watching other players make mistakes than paying attention to your own mistakes, making sure you're fine. It's really difficult to watch what everyone else is doing and yourself. Last question, do you go on big losing streaks? Look, you're not going to win every single match. You can get win streaks and you can get losing streaks. However, if you're on a six, seven game losing streak, that's not the game's fault. That's not your teammate's fault. That is your fault. There are two main reasons for this. One is, you really should stop playing after two or three losses. Personally, I go three max, which is the max, but uh, from what I hear, a lot of people actually stop at two. There's three reasons for this. One is not that many people on, so you end up queuing with the same people either on your team or on the other team. If you see the same person three or four matches in a row, uh, if they're good, then yeah, by all means, keep queuing and you're probably going to get them. But if you notice they're not that great and they've been in three of your matches, just stop. Just quit comp for that night. The other reason you really need to stop after two or three maximum is because you're tilted and you don't think you are. You think you're fine. I do this. We associate being tilted as being toxic. So we feel like if we're quiet, we're not berating anyone, we're not yelling at anyone, that we're not tilted. It's not true. If you even get to the point where you're constantly rolling your eyes because of what other people are doing, that goes back to what I was saying, that you're paying attention to what other people are doing instead of your own gameplay, which is causing you these losses because you're making mistakes that you don't see. So that's all my five questions. So in a nutshell, what you should be doing is go out there and the next match you lose, review it. I know it's going to take time, but you only really need to do one. And honestly, I think it's better if you have gold medals and think you did well and still lost. Watch that match. That's going to be very eye-opening. Go out and choose a main. You can still flex to other roles because sometimes you need a healer, sometimes you need a tank, sometimes you need DPS, it happens. But you still should choose a main and go find a top 500 player and watch and learn from them. You're not, you're at low rank, you're not a pioneer in 
the new style of whatever hero you're trying to master, it's already been figured out. Just go find a top 500 person that runs it. There's top 500 Torbjorn and Symmetra players. There's a top 500 player for every hero in this game. So just go out there and find them and mimic their behavior. Ignore the meta. Meta doesn't matter. If you're in plat or below, meta doesn't matter. Probably even for diamond too, but I haven't gotten to mid diamond just yet currently. So I can't really speak on that. But plat and below, meta doesn't matter. So stop saying you need a barrier tank. Stop saying you need a primary heal. Stop saying all that. You need a hit scan. I actually had a guy one time tell me before the match started, I was running May and he said, uh, can you run soldier on Hanamura defense? I was like, why? Well, they might have a Farah. So he's adhering way too much to the meta because A, he didn't even look at the enemy's stats. And when I did, only one person had any time on Farah, and it was like, their fourth or fifth hero down on their list. It was like 20 minutes of playtime. So even if they did play Farah, they're most likely not going to be good at her. So he just went in and was like, yeah, we need a soldier in case they have a Farah. Like, before the match even started, without even looking at the enemy stats. And even then, like, the Farah probably not going to be good. This is a very good example of what I mean, where you have the knowledge of Overwatch, but the execution of that knowledge is not there yet. So he knows that soldier is good against Farah, but... One, Soldier does not mean Farah is automatically going to have a hard time. Because why would you want someone to run a hero that they don't play that much? They're not going to play ideally. And he didn't even bother checking the stats. He just went with meta. Don't force someone to play something they're not good at just because it's meta. You want them on their best heroes. So stop adhering to the meta. Stop blaming others. And not because your critiques are wrong. Like I said, there's a good chance you actually are right. But because it takes focus off your own gameplay and you're spreading toxicity, which makes other players play worse. Another good example is yesterday I was on Dorado and I ran May on defense. And before the match started, we were actually positioning. And one guy says, I swear, May, I'm going to report you for throwing. Like, how am I supposed to respond to that? I just ended up leaving the voice chat altogether. So do it as a ends justifies the means kind of concept. Because if you get toxic, people are going to play worse, and now you're securing the loss. If there was any chance of securing a win, you just killed it with your toxicity. And make sure to stop playing after two, three matches max. If you are on a losing streak, just stop. It, and for me, I'm learning if you are on a 50% win rate where you win one, lose one, win one, lose one, you should probably stop as well. Not that there's a risk of you dropping, but you're wasting time. You either need to queue up with someone or just take a break and come back. So you're not losing SR, but you're not climbing either, and you're just spending time in this limbo. So after two or three consecutive losses, just stop playing. And one more thing I wanna add about the meta comment is that people want to run meta because they believe it's going to make their matches run smoother. And technically they're right. Running a barrier tank, running, and even in this current meta, running Mercy and Junkrat. If you don't run these heroes, and the enemy team does, you actually are at a kind of disadvantage. But if you're playing heroes that you're really good at, and the enemy team is running these heroes and they're not great at them, you're going to win. Junk a junk rat that can't land his bombs, always misses concussion blast, a mercy who always gets really bad reses and gets killed during them. Like is the getting the right heroes in whatever meta we're in doesn't secure a win. And I think people really need to understand that. So after all this do you deserve your rank? Let me know in the comments below. Did this help you guys? Did you already know all this? Is there something I missed that you feel like is keeping you from climbing? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to read your comments. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.